Uh, good evening, everybody. This is Thursday, May 28th. It is 6.30 p.m., and I would like to entertain a motion to enter ex <coughs> executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with union and or non-union in which, if held in an open meeting, may have a detrimental effect and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a det detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. So moved. Moved by Mr. Hainer, seconded Thanks. by Dr. Seuss. All, uh, roll call. Aye. Mr. Hainer, Mr. Pierce, Aye. Uh, Aye. Dr. Allison Ampey, Ms. Starks. Yeah. Uh, yes. Dr. Seuss and the chair votes yes. Uh, it is a unanimous 6 0 vote. We are in executive session. Missing? You can just leave it. Oh no, we got high school kids coming too. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Uh, um, I don't know if there's going to be any tea. Why don't you take this stuff for now and I'll, I'll get another coffee. Uh, we were in executive session to uh, conduct some business that was required to be in executive session, but I'm pleased to announce that we have concluded the reason for that executive session uh, most joyously, and uh, we will repeat the, our votes from executive session now in public so the public can see the conclusion of our work. Mr. Hainer, the first motion. Uh, I move that we ratify uh, the MOA and related documents in the contract with the uh, Arlington Education Association. Okay, moved by Mr. Hainer, seconded by Ms. Starks. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That is a unanimous vote. Next motion, Mr. Hainer. I move that the chair be authorized to sign uh, the completed contract when all documents are presented in their printed format. Uh, moved by Mr. Hainer, seconded by Ms. Starks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, that's a unanimous vote. We have now concluded our negotiations for a successor contract with our teachers. The contract expired on June third. will expire on June 30th. Uh, we will now have another three years uh, with, with a new contract. August. Uh, uh, we, we will not be able to discuss particularly details until they announce it but uh, the, the one thing I want to say is that in Arlington the way we do a contract we, we do a process called interest-based bargaining uh, a lot of traditional bargaining is very adversarial um, in that uh, you feel you win when you get what you want and the other side didn't get what they want our approach is to look for common ground and find ways to make a better contract and find as many reasons to say yes to each other as possible. It's a very collaborative effort. Uh, the teachers uh, and, and the other bargaining units who participated with us have been very positive. And there's been a lot of hard work on their side and our side. Uh, Mr. Pierce and Ms. Starks completed the process. Mr. Hainer was from the beginning. We did a workshop with the whole committee and the teachers last year on interest-based bargaining, the administrative team. Uh, led by Mr. Spiegel, has been outstanding. Uh, it, it, it's been a very positive process. And, uh, and I've gotten an email from another district asking us about our experiences with interest-based bargaining. And I think that, you know, we, this has been an outstanding experience all around. And I want to congratulate everybody who worked on this. Uh, public participation. Uh, bear in mind that we restrict public participation to three minutes per participant and that we do not respond within uh, the public participation uh, portion of the meeting. The first person on the list is Maura McCarthy, who will be followed by Claire Catavora. 
Good evening, my name's Maura McCarthy. I'm the parent of a Stratton second grader and also a Stratton kindergartner. And I'm here tonight to share with you my reflections about the subcommittee meeting, mm -hmm. which I attended on Tuesday evening regarding the rebuild and relocation of our school. Um, I wanna start by saying we love the Stratton School. We have amazing teachers and we're really pleased to be at the Stratton School. I wanna follow up by saying I was really troubled by a comment that was made here, actually made there and made here, by a member of the superintendent's office which stated that the relocation of our students to the Audison Middle School would be killing two birds with one stone. I'm troubled by that comment for a few reasons, but tonight I wanna to tell you that I'm troubled by it because I don't think it's accurate. I think that relocating our fourth graders to a middle school is not an appropriate way or an educationally sound placement to place our students during their fourth grade year. I also don't think it's an appropriate way to solve the problem of overcrowding at the Audison Middle School. Dr. Bodhi presented enrollment figures at that meeting which indicate the enrollment surge in our district is huge. I want to ask the school committee to please consider addressing the surge in enrollment separately from the, from the placement of our students in modular classrooms at the Audison Middle School. It's clear the Audison needs more space. It's clear our students need to be in modulars during the relocation. That's understood. We're asking you to please solve each problem in a long-term, creative, and critically appropriate way and give our fourth grade students an appropriate placement in an elementary school that year. Thank you. Thank you. Claire Cavatorta. Hi. Um, my name is Claire Cavatorta. I am a parent of a kindergartner at Stratton currently, and I also have a three-year-old who will be entering the school system uh, actually the year after the proposed relocation and rebuild of Stratton. Uh, my husband, Christopher, is a third grade teacher in Lexington and has been in the school system there for um, over 13 years. Um, and he has had some experience with a similar renovation rebuild at his school, which is Bridge School in Lexington. Um, and as parents who are um, parents of elementary school students and also um, having worked in the educational system, we are concerned just generally about our experience with the, the renovated product, product uh, and the disruption level it'll cause to the overall school and all the students and teachers, the overall experience and having the students come back to a school that really has um, common space renovated but doesn't do anything to alleviate the overpopulation issues in the elementary schools overall through Arlington, which um, even in the past six years are up almost 20% and seemingly projected to only increase from here out. Um, we have heard that potentially Stratton is a district that is not seeing the same level of increase, but potentially redistricting townwide may be something to consider, but to pour millions of dollars into a Stratton renovation and gain not a single classroom in terms of space doesn't seem like a well thought out um, plan, and I'm just here to express that concern. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public participation? Seeing none, next item on the agenda will be e-cigarette policy. Now, we have a public policy class which is tied to uh, Syracuse University uh, graduate program. And I had the honor of being able to go and attend one of the sessions. And the topic was directed at the school committee, that we were their intended audience. So. Uh, I thought it would be appropriate for them to bring it uh, before us, not just because it was a good presentation where, where that would merit it on its own, but there are also some policy issues that I think there are things that we should be thinking about. So uh, I want to introduce Renee Hamblin, Mallory DeFeo, and Elizabeth Kamia. Uh, uh, and whoever is presenting needs to be at a microphone. <laughs> um, so, uh, you're much better off sitting at one of the tables. You can be at that microphone too if you like, as long as it's a microphone because uh, th th this, is, uh, this is live TV and you're going out, <laughs> little pressure, you're going out to the entire world because I know that we've got at least somebody watching in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Probably my mom. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, as you said, we are from the public policy class that is taught at Arlington High School through Syracuse. Um, so basically, we've done a semester's worth of research 
um, we chose health as our category and then we pinpointed a societal problem and for us it was e-cigarettes and how they're a growing problem amongst youth. And from there we created a policy and mind you this was in a semester so um, I like to think we did the best to our abilities and mm -hmm. I guess it really had an effect on some people because here we are. Mm -hmm. But um, here we go. Mm -hmm. So our societal problem, we said that the problem was that Middlesex County youth are being undereducated about how big tobacco companies target us. Um, so there is a steady rise in popularity of e-cigarettes especially and the, the people who are currently smoking e-cigarettes will then start to use the more harsher um, tobacco products like regular cigarettes. Um, so us as students, we have never been mm -hmm. educated about e-cigarettes specifically. Our, all of our years in school, they don't tell us about e-cigarettes whatsoever. And the only way that we can learn about e-cigarettes is through the 84 Club, which is totally voluntary, and that's where our interest from interest for this came up. Could you tell us what the 84 Club is? Yes, the 84 Club. Do you want to? You're like sure. So, um, <laughs> the 84 Club was starting at Ar started at Arlington my sophomore year, so mm -hmm. two years ago. Um, it's part of the 84 movement, which is 84 percent of students do not use tobacco products. Now it's 89. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a Massachusetts statewide movement, but other states have movements like this across the nation. And basically, we just try to get the message out there to our peers mm -hmm. the what tobacco companies are doing because I think a lot of us are unaware of kind of like the insidious ways they target us. So um, really there's only 10 members. It's kind of hard to do a lot. So that's why I think it's because this is such a big issue, it's up to the school now to take it into their own hands, especially for the safety of the students. Okay, continue please. So the causes of students smoking e-cigarettes, uh, as you can see, will be the lack of knowledge and education that we have about them, um, the peer pressure, and the advertising that makes e-cigarettes seem very healthy, um, and also how the big tobacco companies are targeting us using appealing flavors and colors. Um, and the effects of students smoking e-cigarettes are that, well, that we, are think, we are smoking them thinking that they are healthy, and that students, that we are being pressured, and we are more inclined to then use harsher tobacco products mm. um, and this is hurting the health and safety of uh, Arlington High School students. So here we have a graph of the daily cigarette usage among students. The blue line on top is the percent of 12th grade students who are currently um, using cigarettes daily. And the line on the bottom is the red line is the percent of 8th grade students who are currently using, um, currently using cigarettes daily. And although they are both decreasing, our focus is the gap between them. So it shows that in middle school, we're taught that cigarettes are not good for us, and so we don't smoke them. But then as we, as we get into high school, we are less educated about what, the, like, what they are, and the peer pressure is increasing. So that's where our main focus is, is the gap between the eighth grade students who smoke them and the 12th grade students who smoke them. So, <laughs> excuse me, so from this, <laughs> we came up with a policy that all Arlington High School, our Arlington Health um, classes will be required to teach a unit on electronic cigarettes <clears throat> and also big tobacco companies targeting tactics because really the only reason we're informed about targeting tactics is because of 84. So a lot of high school students are unaware of what we like to call in the 84, cheap, sweet, easy to get. Um, you can get, not in Arlington, but in some towns you can get a single cigar like a one of the cigarellos for under a dollar. Um, sweet, they come in flavors such as bubblegum, cherry, cool limeade. So that's obviously not being targeted to any of you. Mm -hmm. um, and easy to get, uh, go down the street, there's a convenience store basically on any corner. Um, and there is a big problem with uh, older people buying for younger people, but that's another issue. Um, so this policy we came up with. So. The costs, um, I think, are greatly, the benefits out greatly outweigh the cost. But anyways, you have to send the health teachers to be taught the new curriculum. This isn't actually a money cost because 
through the Human Resources, Health Resources in Action, um, there are free Tobacco 101 classes, and I've taken that class, and I'm, uh, teachers or adults can take that class, and then mm -hmm. I think we'll be able to teach um, about the targeting tactics. Um, decrease health time on other health topics, so maybe we won't spend as much time on depressants and stimulants, but that's, I don't think, as important right now as the e-cigarettes. Like, based on the issue at hand, you need to a lot more time. Mm -hmm. Um, a major consumer population for, uh, for will be lost to tobacco companies, and from us, that's not a loss. Um, so benefits, it stops the increase of tobacco usage. Um, like we saw in, in the graph, as you get older, you're more likely to use it, especially in high school, because mm -hmm. that's the, where the peer pressure comes from. But the more educated you are, the less likely it is to happen. Uh, it eliminates tobacco as a gateway <coughs> drug and then fewer adult smokers in the future. If you are 90% of adult smokers right now started before their 19th birthday and if you turn 25 there's virtually 100% chance you will not start smoking. So if we can get them out of high school without ever starting then we'll maybe have a tobacco free world which is our hope. So, um, in order to learn more about the students at EHS um, who um, smokes e-cigarettes, we need to know like about the students who reported it. So, um, we used um, our research and found the American Cancer Society um, gave some um, numbers about the students who um, reported using e-cigarettes. And um, so, we saw that there was an increase in the percent. From 2011, it was 4.7% of students, and then to 2013, it was 12%. And then we estimated that in 2014, it would be 14%. And so this percent change is huge. From 2011 to 2014, mm -hmm. the percent change is 197.90%, um, uh, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And um, we see if we don't implement this policy, um, we predict that um, the years is a percentage of students who smoke e-cigarettes, the, um, the percent is going to rise as seen in the graph. Mm -hmm. And then, so in order to check up on our policy and to see if it's working, um, we decided to have benchmark periods. And we did it every year because we found that it would perfectly measure um, the progress and to see um, the amount of students who stop um, smoking e-cigarettes, and it, it a, a year is an academic year, so it will show each year as we go on. And um, our benchmark period, um, you can see that this is the blue line is the um, the previous years we have through the data, and then the yellow line, um, we see that um, it doesn't go down initially because it takes time for the policy to implement and for students to get into classes. Mm -hmm. But um, we start to see a trend um, with the policy being implemented that um, the students who are smoking or reported smoking e-cigarettes has gone down. So the feasibility of this policy, how likely it is to be implemented, <coughs> so it is up to Ms. Bouvier, because um, she is the director of the physical education department. and. Just based on Arlington's past and how they stand on tobacco products, we don't see this as a very big problem, especially because we already have a unit on cigarettes, so it wouldn't be creating this whole new curriculum. Um, so basically, we see this as 100% feasibility. Now, as a school committee, um, this isn't really, it is up to you, but it's more in the hands of her just because it's kind of a minute uh, change. But why we're here is we just want e-cigarettes to be treated the same way, especially in the handbook, as cigarettes. Um, especially for punishment, there's loopholes in that, well, it says we're smoking cigarettes or, you know, this is an electronic cigarette, it's not the same thing. Um, it is <coughs> a tobacco product, so depending on how it's labeled in the handbook, it can be seen covering everything. Um, and so that's why we're here. Any questions? Yeah, I, uh, bef before I uh, put this out to the rest of the committee, uh, you made a point of e-cigarette use within this building. Uh, could, you elab could you elaborate on that? Okay. Um, so there's um, a lot of students in um, high school, well, not a lot, but a fair amount, are using e-cigarettes. And the 
teachers don't know what they look like. They're not informed. And you could smoke them in a class without knowing, in the cafeteria. It's, it looks like um, a pen almost, in some sense. So <laughs> teachers who aren't educated won't know. And it's just, yeah, it's really fun. We took a survey through the 84, <coughs> and it was, we just tried to get the whole community in general, and adults were more likely to say it was like a pen or mascara or just some crazy thing, and teenagers and kids were more likely to say it was an electronic cigarette. So it's definitely something we know about and you don't, and especially as teachers. Um, it's easy to get by. Some Arlington High School teachers are kind of oblivious at this. It doesn't smell like traditional tobacco smoke. It smells like the cherry and the bubba gum. Um, mm -hmm. So I've seen kids in the back of my class smoking them and using them, and it smells great, but it's not good for you. <laughs> Okay, uh, to the committee, uh, Dr. Seuss. Oh, I actually have a similar question. So the 14% number that you cited, is that for high school students in general or for Arlington high school students? This is for high school students in general. It was from the American Cancer Society. Okay, so it's, we don't know if your Arlington numbers are as bad as that, well, we but looked you're at suspecting the, there. It's not the numbers we used, mm -hmm. um, just for our graphs, but we looked at the survey that's given every youth health survey. Youth health survey. Right. We looked at that, and there is a dramatic increase. Um, so there's a separate question on e-cigarettes in that one. Yeah. There is. So you have a, a sense yes. of what the numbers look like. It, there is definitely one on tobacco <clears throat> usage, okay. um, and just based on being in this environment, I can only attest to say that it's an increase in tobacco usage is because of e-cigarettes. Right. Kids are getting into them because they say this is good for you. Um, and e-cigarette companies are selling them, selling them saying, this is to help you stop smoking. But if kids are saying they're never using cigarettes, but they're using e-cigarettes, how can that be helping you stop smoking? So the numbers, don't the numbers show a decrease in tobacco usage? Or are they, are you saying that they're not quite interpreting? When you look at those, those numbers for the health survey, they show a decrease each year? I mean, it's a small decrease each year? Oh, so then it must, I know there is an, no, that was our, um, what, what we predicted yeah. would happen if the, but if the policy was implemented. I see, okay. Mr. Hainer is next. Two questions. How many of your peers do you think look at it that the e-cigarette the e is not tobacco? Um, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so so part, part of the education is, 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 is to get to them, but to get to the whole community as a whole, mostly them. Uh, the other part, Let's make it clear, e-cigarettes are a tobacco product. Yes. Okay. A lot of my friends think it isn't and think it's a way of getting away from tobacco and Which stuff for like some that. people it is, if you've been a smoker all your life, like two packs a day, this will, it doesn't have as much um, nicotine in it or actual tobacco. So but it's if still, you're in that case, but it's, they're putting, they made this product to attract youth because that's their target population because they know they won't have I just want to be clear yeah, that it is, it a, is tobacco. a tobacco product as well. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Thielman. Uh, you know, nice work on all of this. Yeah. And you made a statement earlier that there are things that you know that we don't know. That's this big list of things you know. That we don't know. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the question I have is you're asking uh, for a policy that a unit be taught in health on e-cigarettes, correct? Mm -hmm. So if I, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, that, that's a course that's, that's offered in, in, and described in the student handbook. So you're going to talk to uh, the principal, to Dr. Janger. Have, have you talked to him about this idea that you want to add this unit to the course? Um, we have I, not. I, I, I like kind of hinted <laughs> at it once. <laughs> you, you kind of talked to him? Yes. Okay. And was, he, I thought he was going to be here. So. Wait, what's that? Oh, we thought he was going to be here. So oh, you thought he was going to be here. Okay. Gonna, <laughs> then we could talk about Okay. So the, as I understand the process, to, and this is so, the, I think uh, the school committee usually doesn't get into what's actually in every single course. But what you should, my suggestion would be that you meet with Dr. Janger. He proposed that this unit be added to the course and that he include it mm -hmm. in the, uh, the, the student handbook. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, program of studies, it's called, mm -hmm. right? You call it the program of studies, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we call mm -hmm. it the program of studies. So we, we and we can. I mean, we can amend and approve the uh, program of studies up until, mm -hmm. I mean, this summer. We can if we want to, if he wants to add that, right? Or he can do it with, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so we, there's time to take action, but yeah, you need to talk to the principal. Mm -hmm. and You need to say you want to add this. And you, want, you need to say that this, you know, the school committee is very open to the idea mm -hmm. of amending mm -hmm. the program of studies so that this unit is covered. Now, there may be a discussion you have to anticipate, which is if you add a unit, 
to a course, sometimes you've got to, you know, drop something yeah. off. Exactly. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So that's a conversation you may have to have. And there is something in here, just to, just to you know, you, you said the teachers, um, it won't be any extra uh, time or money. Well, there will be extra time. Yeah, that time. was the problem. Okay. Yeah, There's okay. the health teachers taking away their time. It would yeah. be like. So you have to be, I think you have to sort of, in your conversation with the principal, you have to sort of take into account the fact that the teachers are going to need some extra training on it. But it sounds really worthwhile. And, you know, if there are other things you know that we don't know that should be <laughs> in the program of studies, feel free to tell us. Okay. <laughs> we'll yep. go back and. I, I just want to add <clears throat> two things, because one of the foc uh, the, the primary focus of the student committee was to amend our course offering to uh, include e-cigarettes, but the thing that I heard from a school committee point of view and as a school administrator is that we need to tighten up our policies regarding the use of e-cigarettes yeah. uh, on, uh, on campus. Right. Okay. And that's sort of something that's within our domain. That's true. And, and I'd like to uh, hear a motion to refer that portion of it to our Policies and Procedures Committee. So moved. Uh, moved Second. by Dr. Allison Ampey, seconded by uh, Ms. Starks. Uh, Mr. Hainer. Uh, in that move, I'd, I'd like the committee to uh, direct the Policy Committee to uh, every place where it says cigarettes, put a comma, put e-cigarettes, just to emphasize it that much more. Or maybe yeah. it should say yeah. all yeah. tobacco yeah. products. All tobacco products, products. products. Yeah, yeah, tobacco products. Yeah. E including, yes, and exactly. However, however we need to amend it, We'll leave that to the uh, Policies and Procedures okay. Committee to make sure that our policies are tight on this and that the code of discipline within the student handbook is also tight so that uh, e-cigarettes are treated uh, unambiguously like other tobacco products. Mr. Pierce. Yeah, I'd just like to bring up that the Mass Association of School Committees, on their model policy in cigarettes, mm -hmm. which is much shorter than ours, mm -hmm. um, doesn't even speak to e-cigarettes. I think right. it's, a, it's a new... Mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. is coming across and I'm mm -hmm. very happy that you're bringing it to us mm -hmm. earlier rather than later mm -hmm. so thank you thank you I'd be happy to take that up with our subcommittee yeah. okay. maybe we can also bounce that back to MASC mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah because and then see from there MASC is the umbrella group in Massachusetts that has all the different school committees mm -hmm. and so if we bounce it to them then they'll bounce it to everybody mm -hmm. in Massachusetts yeah. that would be awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Arlington has been such a pioneer, especially with the Board of Health, in mm -hmm. really staying on top of what's coming out from the tobacco companies. Mm -hmm. But in Massachusetts, it is kind of a lagging problem, especially statewide. There's not even a law that bans the sale of e-cigarettes to minors. So you can be like mm -hmm. eight years old and go into a convenience store and buy. Wow. Really? And they put them near like oh my playgrounds goodness, too, like convenience stores. Yeah, yeah, the 84 did a community mapping project just to see in Arlington how close schools are to um, Schools are to so convenience, convenience stores, stores and which mm -hmm. ones sell tobacco products and stuff like that. Um, and so that just, I, it's probably online somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you want to take that, check that out. If you're going the next step, the regulation of sales of tobacco is with the Board of Health and the tobacco. Yeah, well, I've been to a couple meetings and they're really on top of that. Like six months ago, they banned the sale of flavor tobacco products. Mm -hmm. um, so we really have no problem there in Arlington. Originally, our policy was going to focus on the statewide level, but we decided this could be more attainable mm -hmm. and we could actually see this happening. Mm -hmm. And it's come pretty well so <laughs> far. <laughs> so, um, yes. Mr. Hainer? Quick question. Does your grade depend on whether we pass this or not? Uh, <laughs> I'm just, yes, I'm maybe. Kidding. I'm kidding. Sure. Um, <laughs> would you introduce your teacher and tell, him, uh, tell us about <laughs> how he has encouraged you through this process? Um, well, he, uh, well, he was actually giving a speech to us. It was our last day today. And he told us that when the kids came to the school committee or wherever they had to go about adding this, he was like volunteered but didn't really want to or something. And he had to go up to Syracuse and take all these classes. But um, coming in and teaching the class, the activities are so engaging and um, like, for students, we did a lot of, uh, to understand our every chapter, we had one policy, like the class policy going on whether we should legalize marijuana or not. And just from a student standpoint, and maybe not I, but for a lot of my classmates, that was something they were like, okay, I get it, I can relate to this. Um, so everything was really well understood and he was able to explain everything really well. 
uh, anytime we had a question, he knew the answer, and I think that's the most important. Uh, and that teacher's name is? Mr. Sansonito. Mr. Sansonito. <laughs> Mr. Sansonito. <laughs> who is? Uh, coming uh, from, he's a coach also, yeah. coming from practice. Yeah. He, yeah. Does he, does he does it all. He does it all. I have a formal attire. We don't require right. formal attire. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to have you. Yeah. So I apologize for that. <laughs> any, any further discussion? Uh, this has been wonderful. Been On the motion uh, to refer, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. I just thank want to say you. thank you for inviting <laughs> me up. This is, a, this is the first year we've run this course. Uh, and I, I think I'm invited, I think I sent an email to just about everybody in here and to have uh, a lot of great feedback, whether you could make it or not, and just uh, the, the interest that you've shown uh, has been tremendous. Like I guess this is my first year teaching it, so I didn't really quite know what to expect. But uh, the, the, the kids that stayed in the class, they did a, uh, they did a fantastic job and, and kind of really took ownership over these. and. Uh, the nine presentations that they've been given have been fantastic, and this is one of several that have been really, really well done. So uh, I'm hoping it grows in popularity. But this is a little daunting, especially for high school students. Yeah. So uh, in the first year, kind of coming up, being invited to come up to school, we kind of put them on the spot the other day. So they had no choice but to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping that maybe, like, throughout the years, this will become a thing that, like, if you take this class, this if you're the best presentation, this is just going to happen. Just so kids are more motivated that there is an end result. They're not just doing this as a school project. Right. Exactly. They're actually doing it as something. So they choose something that they are invested in. Right. Well, I think you said that you know stuff that we don't, which is why it's really important for you to come and talk to us. And that's the message I heard when I saw you uh, last week. And that's why I wanted you to come speak to the rest of the Thank committee. Thank you for inviting us. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> now you can go home and watch it over and over again. <laughs> Video on demand, acmi.tv. Uh, next item on the agenda is our school calendar. Um, <clears throat> Did you get it? One of those things that was actually very unusual this year as part of our um, negotiation process was that we, we opened up some of the, the ideas that we were talking about for public discussion, um, both in district and outside the district. And one of the ideas had to do with um, a new elementary schedule for next year, um, which would create a early release day every week, uh, beginning at 1 o'clock, students would be dismissed. Now, while the school committee tonight has ratified um, the memorandum of agreement, the um, we, we still have to have an announcement from the, the teachers on this. But assuming that, that, is, that we have a ratified contract going forward, um, I have prepared a calendar here uh, with a lot of help from Karen Fitzgerald over there, who spent hours on this. Mm -hmm. um, creating a calendar, which is a little easier to understand, but I wanted to go over the high points of it now, because parents was, were told back in the winter that this was a possibility, but I think it's important for them to know um, that this is more of a likelihood now that this is going to happen in the fall. And, and while we, there's both pros and cons, I think, from a parent point of view, that mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, a change in schedule um, that will affect daycare and, and coverage. But one of the things that's a positive about this, actually a lot of positives, um, is that it's going to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And when we've had early release before, there's, you know, it happens on an irregular, and is this the week for a early release? This one will be um, consistent. The only thing that will be slightly different is when we get to conferences, we need to start them earlier than at 1 o'clock in order that um, we are able to have enough 20-minute slots for parents to have um, conferences with teachers. But let's. But some of the key parts of this calendar have already been approved by the school committee. And by the way, I, I think one of the things I'd like to bring to the committee next fall is a, a calendar for the next two years mm -hmm. beyond that mm -hmm. with the start dates. We wouldn't have necessarily the early release days and conferences mm -hmm. figured out. But the start date, so everybody can plan ahead and know yeah. uh, where uh, we're going. And because we always start getting calls, believe it or not, in the early fall anyway. Mm -hmm. so, so that's 
uh, we'll we'll do that actually very early, probably in September. So, uh, based on our last contract, we teachers do start before Labor Day, and this is was in our original calendar. But what you will see here is there's a there is a um, a code for each of these, and if you look at this, we put all of the early release days on Tuesday, including mm -hmm. high school. And by the way, there are no delayed openings either for high school or middle school this year it was mm -hmm. a pilot and after mm -hmm. going to the pilot decide this wasn't uh, the mm -hmm. best option okay mm -hmm. yeah because of well the the mm -hmm. the one for the conferences for uh, the middle school it, it proved to be a little bit more daunting a task to have the kids occupied while the teachers mm -hmm. uh, were having conferences mm -hmm. um, you're saying no planned or uh, late arrivals for the purposes of creating conference time. You, it, we're not talking about snow related. Oh, we're not, definitely not talking about snow related. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that uh, that, that was clear. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> See the last day of school? Now, one of the things that is very unusual uh, that the high school wants to pilot this, this coming year is to actually have conferences in October. <laughs> And the reason for that is that they, they want to have parents be able to discuss uh, placements in classes before the term closes. Rather than have the first term close, then you go to conferences, and at that point sometimes it's very difficult to change a course. Mm -hmm. So um, they want to try that this year. And so when there's an early release day in October, which is early release all on the 20th, Actually, that is going to be a high school conference day. That's the walk-in day. There's no appointments. But they're going to have their conferences in the evening in uh, two days um, in October. And we've, we've changed the format. And I give uh, Ms. Fitzgerald a lot of credit for sort of thinking about how we can do this a little bit differently to make it clear. Down at the bottom in the center, you'll see all evening conferences, no matter which level, are all grouped together, and the high school are going to be in October. The middle school and the uh, elementary are going to pretty much stay uh, in the same uh, time frame as they've had in the past. The conferences for the middle school are spread out basically over a month, really. There's going to be two evening conferences, and there's going to be two afternoon conferences. Um, and as we look at December, the middle school will have a conference on the 1st of December, and they will, they will parallel the elementary early release day. When we get to December 8th, you'll see an early release all. And what is, that is going to be a conference day for middle school and elementary, and that will have an 1115 dismissal. So we'll definitely send reminders out to parents for that. But because the high school has been has given up their delayed openings this year and are taking one of the early release days in October for conferences, the high school is going to use that for an extended professional development time. Um, some other changes. So w when we have these elementary early release times, we have set up a schedule for all of the types of meetings that we're going to have in that, two, uh, in that time frame. So at the elementary level, students would be dismissed at 1 o'clock. There would be lunch on those days. In fact, the only times we do not have lunch are the, are the two days we have the 11-15 dismissal. But in those, in those time periods, there's going to be, a, in fact, the entire year has been laid out already in terms of common planning time, content professional development, and faculty meetings. Um, in fact, that is in, one, in the contract that you um, ratified this evening, one of the appendices actually has what that calendar looks like. So you can see it. I think that the benefits are going to be tremendous. Um, it's such a struggle to find time for teachers to collaborate um, during the school day. When we've done that, we've done whole class PD or even PD within a, within a school, the, str the struggle is getting coverage for the classes. 
And so what we're going to see next year is, a, is not the interruptions that we've, we've had. Now, there's going to be some PD. I'm not saying there's not. The lab program that we talked about will st obviously have to go on during the school day because it's teachers observing teachers teach. But the other types where we've uh, pulled up, you know, had to pull teachers out for data meetings, uh, for content PD, uh, that is all going to go into these early release times. And, and I, th I think everyone is going to really benefit tremendously from this. Some other um, points to note on here is that um, we've no longer put the snow, snowman on. Mm -hmm. Because I saw that. That was actually from my superintendent's advisory council because technically the 29th is our last day of school in June. Mm -hmm. It only goes back to the 22nd if we don't have snow days. Because by regulation, you're supposed to put, you're <coughs> supposed to build into your calendar five snow days. So that's why we've actually sort of changed to saying the June 22nd is the 180th day. Mm -hmm. feel they, can, they go backwards. They feel better They're going to go it. backwards <laughs> instead of the other way around. Uh, and it's important because uh, it's certainly important for staff because they can't really plan summer, summer jobs or trips or anything until we, until we know which day we're going to have, we're going to be able to back up to. But they have to plan and parents do too, plan uh, students to be in school until the 29th of June. Now, that's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. We have one day where we have, if we had six no days, we'd be right up to, right up to the limit and because we cannot go into the next fiscal year. So um, I did see that the El Nino next year is going to be strong, which is a good sign that we might <laughs> yeah. have a lot of warm weather, so we'll see. <laughs> we hope. Uh, so anyway, these are the, the, main, the main things that are different from the calendar we approved, you approved back in the winter. Uh, now you have all the early release days and you have the, um, just all of the conference times. So tonight is a first read. We're not voting on the contract tonight and first we also really shouldn't vote on it because we don't have the uh, ratification vote yet from the um, AEA. So I don't know if there's any questions. And before we go to questions, uh, let me also state that uh, I was asked to provide uh, a uh, draft of the school committee dates. Uh, I, I provided 19 because I didn't uh, do two in uh, November. Uh, and uh, it was pointed out that the policy states that we have to provide 20. So if that's the will of the committee, I would propose backing up and having the first meeting on August 27th. Uh, then we have the discussion on the part of the superintendent. What? Why don't we do the 5th uh -huh. and 19th? Uh, okay. We can't do November 5th because Why? that's MASC conference. Um, and the other thing is, is that uh, the superintendent has informed us that the superintendent and assistant superintendent will be at a conference on December uh, uh, on the first week of December. Uh, so that presents uh, a, a second problem, so we can discuss the two problems uh, right now. Mr. Hainer. I'd like to, uh, sorry, maybe add a third one. Uh, Ms. Stocks last year put a phenomenal calendar together for the uh, budgeting process, which required some intense meetings at the end of November and December and balancing. Mm -hmm. So, and I, personally think that worked out real well getting the, the principals and stuff coming mm -hmm. in to, to visit, which I, I think it had a conflict with a, a similar conference last year. So we, there was generally what we might have to, I'd like to suggest if we're going to look at the, our part of it mm -hmm. is possible uh, meetings back to back. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done that a couple of times before uh, in November and uh, we all, one of the November ones in our regular schedule is <coughs> a chunk of it is dedicated to the superintendent's evaluation. Mm -hmm. So we got to be prepared for that too. So it's a very intense mm -hmm. period from the beginning of November to the end of December. Right. So we could so. do this 12th and 19th. We could do 12th and 19th, and we could do 10th and 17th. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I would mm -hmm. recommend. Mm -hmm. No problem. With that. Okay. Yeah, uh, that, and that brings us to 20 dates. So we, don't yeah. have to worry, we don't have to worry about the August meeting. So we don't have to worry about the August yeah. meeting. We can call a special <laughs> one if we think we need one, but that we don't have to schedule it. May Mr. Haney, you may continue. Uh, first off, I would like to thank 
uh, Dr. Chesson and all the teachers that were involved in developing that very complex schedule to make the time balance and work with the uh, early release day. It, uh, I, I agree with Dr. Bodie. I think it's going to be something extremely beneficial. Uh, teachers are, are, are more active during the day than having the meetings at the end of a day after a whole day and stuff like that. I think it, w I think it will work well. Arlington did it before and it's now doing it again. Um, I would like to also reiterate that I'm going to be the doomsayer. I don't know if El Nino is going to work or not, but if we have seven snow days uh, and they happen before the magic date, I think it's April, April 1st. 1st. April 1st. April 1st. Uh, I just want to let parents know and teachers know that we're looking at something that hasn't happened, I think, mm -hmm. in the history of the school system. Uh, uh, finding an extra day or finding something mm -hmm. creative. Do, Dr. Bodie, uh, Dr. Chesson, do you, have we had any reaction from DESE on the creative thing that Burlington and the other school system tried? They actually didn't try it. Um, they, there was a lot of press about it, but mm -hmm. they actually never really had a, an Electronic agreement. makeup day is what it, yes. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, they, they've, actually I was at the spring superintendents conference mm -hmm. and the, the message from the commissioner was start earlier in August. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, so he was not entertaining. Like he wasn't entertaining. They're going to buy into that there all the time. There was no day. discussion at the okay. meeting about that. Okay. So I again, I'll be the doomsayer. I think parents and teachers ought to be prepared to potentially go to the 29th uh, or whatever. Uh, yeah. And if mm -hmm. it doesn't happen, it's to the plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to reply. Or we're going to rely on your sunny disposition to keep the snow away. Um, Good luck. Uh, uh, I'd like to hear a motion to accept the calendar for first read with an amendment that we delete the school committee meeting uh, of December 3rd and we add school committee meetings on the 19th of November and the 10th of December. So that would be the motion moved by uh, Ms. Stark, seconded by Dr. Seuss. Um, who, every time she turns or moves her <laughs> finger, she's seconding something. Okay, uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. I just wanted to bring up one thing. I noticed on June 28th, it doesn't have an early release, and I'm wondering if just for parallelism, if we want to Good point. We mm -hmm. can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first is an early release that you have. Yeah. Can I actually just has a question about what what does it mean to accept it for first read? Is, what is that? We've just done it for first read and we'll have to go and vote it again uh, at so a subsequent meeting. But we, we, we're, we're, we're advancing this to the second read in, in, the, in the format with that amendment so that we can release it to the community. They see what we're about to do. If they want to come back in the room and start saying, oh, no, please don't do this, they have one more meeting in which to do that. Dr. Allison Ampey. I just want to point out, if we do any releasing of it to the public before we vote on it, can we make sure it has draft written mm -hmm. all over it? Yes. Because mm -hmm. right now it doesn't, and I don't want mm -hmm. so, it to escape. Mm -hmm. So to clarify, this, so we'll put the draft policy on the website mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, with the, with the intent that we'll vote it at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. 11 to June. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going to amend it with those new dates for the school committee meetings and the ed ending and putting uh, early release on the 28th. Or with an asterisk if, if school's yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just one caveat mm -hmm. to that. Um, I, I do need to wait. We need to wait until we know that the contract has been ratified mm -hmm. officially from the AEA. To publish it. Okay. To yeah. publish it, yes. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Even the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, on the motion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's the unanimous vote. Um, user fee discussion. Um, MASC on the list uh, has got another one of these uh, discussions on, on user fees and athletic fees. And Ms. Starks uh, pointed out to our chagrin that we are one of the <laughs> highest uh, uh, user fee communities in town. Now, uh, from my limited time on this uh, iteration of the committee and my time on the committee starting in 2001, we've seen a lot of creep on these fees. And whenever we've asked the, commu uh, the community, particularly our parents, if the choice is uh, reducing user fees or reducing academic core services, parents have always said, no, please, we'll pay the fee in order to preserve the services. 
But that's the question we've asked. The, the, the broader question, uh, I think, is, is this a town where we want to be the town with the highest user fees? And uh, is this the way we want to do business? And I don't know the answer to that. I think that we should explore that question. And I think that we should also just take a look at where we are, what we're charging, what other communities are doing, if any other communities have been able to eliminate or reduce user fees without impacting academics, and maybe come up with a, a strategy or plan to go and address the issue if one emerges from it, much in the same way we looked at the kindergarten user fees uh, before. Uh, not is a plan of action, but certainly is, a, is active research and a plan of inquiry. So that's why I'm putting this together. I'm requesting your permission to, to getting a couple of school committee members uh, to do a task force or committee to go and do the study in cooperation with the administration to explore our options. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, I just wanted to point out that while it is true that we have some of the higher user fee for mm -hmm. athletics, it's also true that we did that in not just to maintain a academics but mm -hmm. also to maintain a full broad mm -hmm. range of athletic programs yes. and many schools mm -hmm. are going I mean even on the list served now we're seeing schools are cutting either some or all of their sports mm -hmm. um, instead of having high athletic fees and I'm just yeah I want it to be clear that mm -hmm. it's not just to maintain academics it's also to keep, keep the, the programming program going and we have and some of the best programming in the state we've got great so coaches great kids uh, um, it, it's something we're very proud of in this town and it really unites uh, our, our student body. It, it's an excellent program. Well, and uh, truth be told, we haven't changed our fees since 2011. Yeah. Right. We well, set them mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. year and they've been set no, for the... No, we actually did change them slightly, but in a decrease we, in we sense. We made a couple of adjustments. Had, yeah, um, because the fee numbers that were set did not actually bring in the revenue that they were projected to bring in. Mm -hmm. But instead mm -hmm. of trying to bump the fees up even more to bring in more re revenue, we chose to just mm -hmm. take, keep them where they were and mm -hmm. um, use the lower revenue. Mr. Hainer. Two things. Without going into too much detail, we may have to reconsider those fees again with the existing contracts mm -hmm. uh, dealt with. But mm -hmm. I don't want to go into too much detail. I would like to support the idea of forming a study review uh, committee to, to look at other things. Have other communities had some success mm -hmm. in uh, reducing or eliminating them? Uh, the worst case scenario is coming back and saying, we're fortunate to have what we have if we want to maintain it this is the only way we can do it mm -hmm. but I, I would support the idea of looking at it and uh, mm. uh mr Thielman. so in uh 2011 10 mm -hmm. whenever we look at this uh <clears throat> we didn't create a task force a separate task force we referred it either to budget or community relations mm -hmm. budget mm -hmm. budget i think budget it was did budget. it yeah and so i think i'm wary of a task force because people mm -hmm. have multiple committees they're on and they're pretty mm -hmm. busy and so i'm wondering if just mm -hmm. referring this to the budget subcommittee is mm -hmm. a better idea a more efficient okay. use of people's time mm -hmm. the difference uh, may i um uh dr allison Anthony. um the difference oh. between setting a tax force and referring it to budget was that budget was charged with was tasked with the um charge to determine what appropriate levels of fees would be mm -hmm. not whether not the holistic mm -hmm. should we charge any fees or not and not i mean we did there was actually mm -hmm. there was another task force that kind of fed into that from the athletic mm -hmm. I, I forget the name of it but the athletic commission mm -hmm. or whatever it was and they gave us mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so they they there was something that fed into mm -hmm. it and then budget just took numbers and turned them and came out with what we felt was the most equitable way to raise the amount of money that we needed to raise um, to keep the program going. Um, I think I think it still to me feels like something that's bigger mm -hmm. in scope than I mean you know sure budget mm -hmm. can do something but I think it feels bigger than it wants mm -hmm. to just go under budget. Mm -hmm. I mean budget can then take the answer and mm -hmm. you know again plug and chug and come up with numbers mm -hmm. for you but I think 
it's, it's asking a bigger kind of different question. Mm -hmm. Could it be a task that the community relations subcommittee manages or do you want to set, set up a separate committee? I'm not doing community, um, who's community as, as the chair, uh, I would be looking to chair this task force if you grant it. And uh, I'd go with who, whoever on the committee, Mr. Hainer has expressed an interest. And if a third member would like to participate, Dr. Allison, oh, we go. have three people yourself. who would like to do That's this. All <laughs> <laughs> it's all figured out. Um, so, um, uh, the motion to create a uh, task force on uh, on, uh, on user fees uh, and to to be chaired by myself and to have Mr. Hainer and Dr. Allison Ampey as members. Uh, move. Moved by Mr. Hainer, seconded second. by <laughs> Dr. Seuss, <laughs> the best second in the, in, in the business. <coughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're up to monthly financial reports, and I think that was probably should have been. On, we'll be on the next agenda. Okay. Because you do it the yeah. first, the first meeting mm -hmm. of the month. Uh, is did we bounce it back? No, here. did we do it last time? We yeah, we did. I mean, I okay. thought I asked today if Ms. Johnson was going to be here. She's not going to be here tonight. No, she mm -hmm. sent she's a not. notice saying that she wasn't. Mm -hmm. No, she's okay. not here tonight. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. I, okay. Right. When I, when I saw the document on the thing, I asked the question. I was told yes. And I prepared for it. Sorry for the confusion on that. Through the chair, may I ask a question? Uh, uh, go ahead, Mr. Hanna. The, uh, the fee that we charge for uh, the visa fee, mm -hmm. um, is that, do, in, I don't know, is that covered under the law the way our other fees are covered for its usage? I'm just concerned. I was looking at the, the, in, the in the report that was given. Mm -hmm. As of right now, we've used less than half of it the fees that we acquired. And I do know that we use that money for other things and uh, things of that nature. One of the reasons we reduced the athletic fees and things of that nature, because it was shown that we were not using, the fees that we were charging were not being used. No. I don't know if no. this fee, yeah. no. is, I, I, I this is independent of it. That's, that's incorrect. No. Okay. You're mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, next superintendent's report, Dr. Bodie. I mean, All right. Last um, as well. I have a, f I a few things. Mm -hmm. Some of the, some of the things I may want to talk about with facilities maybe just wait for a subcommittee report. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, well, first of all, one of the things that I, I want to thank is the four members of the committee were able to make the uh, the staff appreciation reception mm -hmm. last week. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. Slickman, Dr. Seuss, um, Ms. Starks, and Mr. Hainer. It, it really meant mm -hmm. a lot for people being recognized to have representation. And I know the rest of you would have loved to come but had conflicts. Um, this is an annual event that we have. I, I gave you the program in which we acknowledge and recognize the years, three things, milestone mm -hmm. years in the 40s, 35. Mm -hmm. And we had, uh, I'll just mention the two people who have 40 years. I think once you get to 40, you're really, the, the level of dedication is quite amazing. <laughs> and two of them um, is our custodian here in the high school, Frank Burgess, and a um, person who actually runs the, the high school part of our food service, Jana Carlino, and both just mm -hmm. wonderful people. But you can see in this that, uh, that there are a lot of people who <laughs> had many years here. We had 23 people mm -hmm. that had, that were on one of those milestones. Mm -hmm. We also recognize uh, teachers have attained professional status, and that means that they're now in their fourth year and have gone through the rigorous process of induction and evaluation and have now attained that. The number is fairly large this year because this was the year after we had the overriding, we were starting to, re to gain ground on uh, the number of teachers we had in the district. So there were 38 teachers. That's all district-wide. And then we had, we also honor the retirees. And this year we have 12, though I think there's maybe a couple more that are, are starting to announce. But some, again, one of our teachers who retired, Jeannie Wall, 41 years as mm. a teacher in the district. It's just um, um, amazing. Just all wonderful people that have she made such an incredible contribution. And I just want to read their name very quickly uh, because they deserve that kind of recognition for all that they've given us. So retiring this year, Ann Albertazzi, the administrative assistant at the high school, mm -hmm. 
Carol Andrus, who's a reading teacher at Stratton, Paul Andrus, a physics teacher at the high school, Walter Bedell, custodian at Pierce, Cindy Bouvier, director of wellness and counseling in phys ed, couldn't get the whole title on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cheryl Christo, who is a, the choral director at that high school. Evelyn DeRosa, reading coach. Lucia Gentile, who is the food service at Addison. Barbara Gridley, who was a fax teacher and, and also a special ed teacher at the high school. Mm -hmm. Lori Johnstone, mm -hmm. uh, grade five teacher Hardy. Janice Satlak Mott, who actually retired Bef after the reception last year, so we included her, and she was a 40-year-plus a kindergarten teacher at Stratton, and Jeannie Wall, who was grade three teacher at Bishop. So it, I, I extend um, from all of the, the school system, and I know from you, mm -hmm. there are well wishes for many mm -hmm. healthy and happy years ahead, and thanking them for the many years of service they've given us. Mm -hmm. Really, when you think about the number of kids, mm -hmm that they have passed through their classrooms or their, their cafeteria or the, the, the halls of the school. It's just an amazing impact on the lives of young, young people. It was lots of fun going around town giving out corsages. Um, and, and they were happy to see me. It's, it's, it's so nice to, to go into buildings and people say, oh, thank you for being here. Um, uh, though it was a very early experience because some of those corsages to the traffic supervisors had to be delivered before they go off their post and the one at the Odyssey leaves at 8. <laughs> so I, I, th this was a very early morning with lots of caffeine and a second stop at uh, Cabrata for, for more coffee. Uh, but th these are such wonderful people and they were just so happy to be recognized by us. I know that Jennifer, when she gets to do this next year, it's going, to be, it. it's going to be the highlight. I've got a couple of pictures of, uh, that I sent to uh, Karen. Um, go ahead. Okay. I, I also want to acknowledge two students that are, have a, a very special awards that have uh, been, been given them. There was a contest by My Ideal School, mm -hmm. sponsored by MSBA. Mm -hmm. And I think that there were over 1,200 drawings submitted into this contest um, from first grade students across the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. It's a very small group. And I'm very pleased to say that one of the winners is a student at Pierce, Bethany Chow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so congratulations to her. Uh, in my newsletter, I'll get her picture up so everybody can see it. It's mm -hmm. very, very cute, very cute. Then another special award is for a student, first, another first grade student at, uh, at Stratton. This is Brianna Gallagher, who, mm -hmm. by the way, is the daughter of our former school resource officer, Lieutenant um, Brian Gallagher, who noticed that there was a fire at Stratton, mm -hmm. told her parents, and because of her quick action and realizing that this was something could be serious, we got the fire department there very quickly, put out the fire, but it could have been very serious, very serious um, fire had it gone undetected. Well, Chief Jefferson um, nominated her for a special award, and we just, we just were notified today by the Massachusetts Department of Fire Services that she's going to be honored at an assembly on Monday at Stratton for her quick thinking and Great. follow through. So <laughs> congratulations to Brianna. I also want to congratulate all of our art students and teachers. The, the, going uh, for the last couple of weeks, we've had an art exhibit over at the town hall, and today was the reception. And, and it still will go on for, uh, an, I think, about another week mm -hmm. on the second floor of town hall. It is just fabulous. We get a chance to go there, and mm -hmm. um, and of course, you can see examples of it all around here. So, congratulations to all of them. Um, one of our High school teachers, Ian McKay, received a, an award in excellence, which I'll again highlight in the newsletter, um, through his association for the work he's done in developing the economics class here at the high school. Last day of school, since we we're talking about calendar, it will be. Uh, just on, on Ian, uh, yeah. I had the pleasure of going down to Norwood to the uh, Massachusetts Council for the Social Studies, uh, where he was presented his award. Um, it's, it's, it was a very impressive thing uh, that he got, and 
they gave out about six awards for different uh, social studies teachers across the Commonwealth, and his was the one in economics. And uh, uh, he's very well thought of uh, statewide. Carrie Dunn was there too, and she just talked about how mm -hmm. what a good job he does for the district. Mm -hmm. He does. In fact, he is the person who coordinates now our Syracuse program where we do the dual enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's it. Other than saying the last day of school it is going to be June 25th. Mm -hmm. June 25th. Mr. Hainer. I just want to mention uh, the Memorial Day program that was held at Audison School this, uh, last week. I apologize. The teacher, uh, you could tell me his name. Uh, uh, Robert Bartholomew? Yes. Uh, oh, oh no, the Jeff Melton. Jeff, Jeff Melton. Melton. Jeff Please Melton um, is a, a math teacher at the middle school. He was the keynote speaker. Uh, he's a uh, reservist. He came in his full Navy dress uniform, and uh, there were quite a few veterans that came uh, that have uh, lost comrades. And uh, it, his speech covered hit every one of the veterans present there, from World War II right up to present. And Jeff is also uh, with myself. Has just been uh, put on the Veterans Council here in town. And uh, the, the, his speech was fantastic. The teachers were fantastic. The students, there is no way that many middle school students should have been that quiet and that well behaved for that long period of time. You could hear a pin drop from the beginning to the end. They were, they, the children put a fantastic program together with the support of the teachers. Uh, the whole staff and everyone is to be commended for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, um, consent agenda. Uh, all items listed, uh, I'm going to ask to pull the May 14th meeting because uh, uh, I, was, I missed 97.3% uh, of it. Um, uh, all items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted in one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Approval of warrant number 15169 dated 514-2015 in the amount of $440,395.40 and approval of the minutes regular meeting of April 30th. Um, is Dr. Allison Ampey. I need to have the April 30th minutes pulled. Okay, we will pull the April 30th minutes. So uh, we will now move the approval of the warrant. So, so moved. Moved by Mr. Thielman, seconded by Mr. Hainer. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, unanimous vote. Next will be the approval of the minutes for the meeting of April 30th. Um, moved by Mr. Pierce, seconded by Ms. Starks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, abstain. Aye. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey abstains. Six nothing one. And uh, approval of the regular meeting May 14th, 2015. Moved by Ms. Stark, seconded by Mr. Thielman. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I abstain. So it's 601 on that. Subcommittee and liaison reports and announcements. Number one, vo vote to appoint members to the Executive Session Minute Review Subcommittee. Mr. Hainer has volunteered, I have volunteered, to, and Mr. Pierce has volunteered. So, motion to appoint Mr. Hainer, Mr. Pierce, and myself to review Executive se uh, Session Minutes made by Dr. Seuss, seconded by uh, <laughs> uh, Ms. Stocks. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, special study group on superintendent evaluation, Mr. Hainer. Nothing to report at this Nothing time. Nothing to report. Thank you. Warrant <laughs> committee, Mr. Hainer. Nothing to report at this time. I uh, signed the warrant. Okay. Policies and procedure, Mr. Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have two policies uh, on the docket for first read tonight. They're ones that I discussed at our last meeting. Um, I want to thank Mr. Spiegel uh, for his work and, and our council for going over the changes that need to be done to our FMLA policy mm -hmm. um, and we also have added a uh, parental leave policy that under the law we must have mm -hmm. um, and so we will be meeting on Tuesday evening June 2nd at 5 to go over any suggestions or mm -hmm. thoughts all of you might have um, to these first read policies we'll be also discussing a few other things at that meeting as well mm -hmm. on June 2nd mm -hmm. any discussion Okay, consider that a first read on those policies. Um, uh, budget, uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Nothing to report. 
uh, facilities, Ms. Starks. All right. Well, we had a spirited meeting on Tuesday at Stratton on the um, rebuild and uh, was mostly talking about uh, how students will be um, redistributed uh, when the Stratton goes um, under rebuild. Um, it was pretty well attended. I think I counted about 30 people um, that were there, parents. And uh, also uh, we had um, uh, one of the assistant principals from the middle school was there. Obviously, Principal Hannah was there from the Stratton. Um, and we also had a vendor of one of the uh, modular companies mm -hmm. come. Um, and it was the modular company that had done the modulars in Lexington and some of the surrounding areas. So it was really good, showed a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. um, so I think at this point, you know, I don't think there's any question that modulars are, are acceptable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that he was able to answer a lot of their questions, which had to do with safety, air quality, um, and all of that you know, it was very, it was great to have the vendor there and actually be able to speak to all that. Um, we followed that up by a presentation by Dr. Bodhi, kind of on the process where we were, um, and uh, tried to give out as much information there as possible. I think the hard thing is that um, what we're seeing is that the enrollment numbers that, or the enrollment projections that were, some of the projection numbers that we're getting from the um, research people are starting to exceed even what Ms. Johnson has <laughs> estimated. Um, and so, it, you know, it was clear that given that, that there are probably some changes in the thinking about what's going to happen. Um, I think that the biggest concern that was there was still, there's still a very vocal group of parents uh, adamantly opposed to having fourth grade students at the Audison. Um, and they're still willing to do just about anything to make that not happen. <laughs> And um, so I think that other than that, I mean, and you know, we didn't, we can't promise them anything, but I think that, you know, if these enrollment numbers are doing what they're doing and we have to put modulars somewhere else, you know, who knows what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. We told them that I think that the biggest thing is that right now we're in the process of getting the designer mm -hmm. and we're in the process of getting these number reports. Mm -hmm. And once we have both of those and we can figure out a way to deal with it, um, you know, I think that a lot of people just aren't clear on the fact that we only have so much money mm -hmm. that we can spend. Mm -hmm. uh, the parent who was here talking about Lexington's rebuilds, mm -hmm. Lexington doesn't use MSBA mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. They have their own money. They could build next to it and knock it down if they wanted to. I mean, they have rebuilt several schools without the MSBA. Um, and, you know, so, you know, I don't think that you can compare, you know, what goes on in Lexington mm -hmm. to what goes on here. And, and I tried very hard to explain to people that we don't hold the purse strings. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if we had all the money to do what we wanted to do, we could do things very differently. But that's not the way it works, mm -hmm. right? It's a, it's a, it, it, it's something that we have to, you know, work with the town to get the money, and mm -hmm. and it's kind of this interesting dance and process that has to go on, um, and you know, it's not necessarily what they wanted to hear, but I think that I think that a lot of the anger and confusion is not understanding the process, mm -hmm. not understanding that we don't have control over some of that process. You know, there's this permanent town building committee; it's not a school only committee, right? And mm -hmm. so trying to help them understand mm -hmm. that, you know, they were kind of, some people were upset that this seems to be a very closed process. I'm like, no, it's just very scripted. It has to happen a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have to do things mm -hmm. this way with the town. And so, I mean, I think that that's where a lot of the anger and confusion and frustration that we hear from people mm -hmm. is. And, and that's what I w wanted to try to go and and hear from them so that I could because I, what they're saying is not necessarily what, what they mm -hmm. mean. And so, mm -hmm. and I don't think sometimes that they're hearing what we're saying. I know that some of you have seen some of the emails mm -hmm. and just the misinterpretations of mm -hmm. information and words, I think is, is kind of clear mm -hmm. in that. And, and I don't think that anyone was, um, I, I think they just took some things the wrong way. And so I'm just trying mm -hmm. desperately to kind of help Mm -hmm. kind of clear that up. So. Dr. Bodie. Thank you. And, and it was, 
it was, it was I think, very helpful to have another meeting, and we'll have more meetings. Um, you know, I do agree that it, it's uh, it's a process that um, has its own it has its own timeline to mm -hmm. it. But I think one of the things too that can be um, in the effort to be as transparent as you can at the beginning in terms of what the thinking is, the, the that, then, then that also creates other issues too in terms of if you have to sort of change mm -hmm. as you get more information, mm -hmm. um, then it's like, well, why did you say that? When we, when the Capital Planning Committee was considering mm -hmm. our project, mm -hmm. um, part of a project is not only the construction, but it's all the other soft mm -hmm. costs that go with it. And we have a budget for the construction, we have a budget mm -hmm. for the soft costs. And that's what we're working with mm -hmm. and that's what we have to work um, within which we mm -hmm. experienced quite quite a bit at Thompson right. and which by the way we did a pretty good job with that <laughs> <laughs> but um, as a result it, it, there are we're working in a in a tight time frame a t frame time I just say time frame but a, a tight budget but I think that we can do it and do it well so we um, I, I'm happy to report that there was another meeting the next night with there's a parent committee that's been formed that has representatives from every grade and then some other people and they, they had a very good meeting. Ms. Murphy came and talked about uh, what could be done in terms of uh, allaying some of the concerns and, and, I, and the report to me was it was very positive, a lot of good ideas because we want the parents to be involved in, in helping to make this a very positive experience. Um, to the extent that we can keep, you know, as much of the school in one spot, obviously for transportation costs, we want to do that. Um, whether that's going to work out as we work with this designer and get really look at all the numbers and the costs is another thing. But when you go out to create a, an RFP, you have to know what you're, what you're doing and so there was just simply a preliminary plan mm -hmm. and I was very clear even when I first put the letter out this is preliminary so we're going to take another look at all the six elementary schools in terms of enrollment issues mm -hmm. um, and what that looks like and what classrooms might be available or not available two years we're talking about two years out mm -hmm. and it's hard enough predicting the number of classrooms we're going to have for September let alone mm -hmm. another year beyond that so I, I think I, I it ha it's any time mm -hmm. there's this kind of change is always going to be upset that was true with Thompson there were a lot of concerns a lot of worries and there were mm -hmm. and parents were very good about giving us ideas that we could work with and um, I thought it was a very positive experience all around very positive so Dr. Allison um, I had a question so I'm hearing through email and and phone calls that there were proposals that were presented at the Stratton meeting that were different than anything I had heard. And I'm wondering how school committee members can, I, I'm sorry I had a schedule conflict and wasn't able to attend. I'm wondering how school committee members and perhaps the public can learn more about these other pr um, those proposals. Were, yeah. Because I looked on our notice, there wasn't anything. I, I those proposals were from the parents? No, 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 no actually. What no. proposals? No. Um, so, for it example, like at, at Thompson, the oh, the location, I, I was the yeah. Place. What I was saying is that you know these are examples of two schools that are growing, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at all six. Mm -hmm. All I said that several times. We're going to look at all six, mm -hmm. and yes, we did say that we had Thompson and Hardy up there because they are growing. Mm -hmm. um, they're growing, and um, we're seeing that now even with kindergarten registrations mm -hmm. that that they're growing faster than some of the other. Um, school mm -hmm. so we have more information than we had even five months ago which I think has to be so we don't have I have to say this right now we do not we are going to look at all six elementary schools in light of new information before we make a final decision as to what the plan will be mm -hmm. and that is the problem with going let it being transparent and going through the process is that you know, well, that's not the plan you told us. Well, that was the pl that was the plan was based on the, the best knowledge we had at the time and yeah. needing to be able to have uh, some idea of how the how we would do this mm -hmm. so the capital planning committee could go out and have a number to work with. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Heiner. <laughs> Two things. Number one, I'm the committee's representative on the permanent town building committee. Mm -hmm. 
Last night, the subcommittee met to review the bids that had come out on this design phase. We narrowed them down to, uh, to invite three of those people to come and meet next Tuesday night. And hopefully, with, there'll be interviews uh, starting at 7.30. Uh, it's an open meeting. Um, hopefully, after those interviews, we will probably meet and pick one uh, for that. So that piece of the thing, we have some dates on, right. uh, that aspect of it. Uh, I think the meeting uh, the other night uh, on Thursday night uh, was good. I think things, a lot of things were said that a little bit shocking, some of the th things that the parents said. My only concern in the night is that, and things got a little upset, is that a statement was made that in, in, when people are emotionally involved, they perceive things differently. Mm -hmm. And the statement was made, well, we can drop the whole project. Mm -hmm. I think that was done in frustration uh, by a member of the administration, and it should not have happened. Uh, it, 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 it can't happen, number one, because we don't control that. that it belongs to the town. The whole Stratton thing belongs to the town. It was done in frustration, and it, hindsight is always good to look back on what I shouldn't have done. Or, or I didn't do it, but I mean, I understand that. I just want to tell the parents that uh, and we all understand the, the Stratton project is going forward. It may not look exactly the way today, the end product may not look like what we perceive it even today. Things are gonna change. We have the design phase, that's moving forward. It's gonna hopefully have a design to pick by next Tuesday going forward. Dr. Buddy already indicated there'd be a, potentially another meeting by the end of June. And I think the hardest part is going to be when we're gonna know what is happening to work out the art, music, PE, and all those other logistical things. You need a building, you need a, a where the kids are going to go and what age level, and then you can look at it. And until that's done, uh, easy for us to tell you, <laughs> hard for you to do, and I appreciate that. But as quick as that message can get out to the parents, that much more. You mean the message about specials? The specials and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. What I said is, right now, the focus has to be on this big issue. Right. Yeah. Then we're going to get to I, it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But in fact, but, but in fact one of the things that, um, Ms. Murphy was saying at the meeting the subsequent night is that parents didn't know, for example, that the first lunch at Audison's at 11.30. Well, we'll have a lunch just for students there at 11. Mm -hmm. So they would have their own, we're going to have lunch in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So it's little things like that, but, mm -hmm. and that was kind of thinking is already going forward, but in terms of how we're going to deal with, you know, special education, Liaison. There's just a there's a mm -hmm. lot that's going to go into this. Mm -hmm. A lot of planning. The other exciting part in the the proposals, and again, it still lays on the design. This could be changed, but uh, the ones that I read had the, mo uh, the modules uh, designed, looked at, and manufactured. I think the one of them indicated that the latest would be uh, mid spring. So th that's a good thing, uh, that, that pressure to, to put the time in and design. They all emphasize the importance of getting feedback from the schools, from the parents, from the teachers and the <coughs> educators in doing these. Modules today are not the uh, trailers that, I mean, you can buy those. There's one down at the fire station right now, but all that is is an office, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. They are, the major difference is they build them off-site instead of on-site. But they're uh, they're really fantastic. They're going to add add addition to a building. They're an addition. Essentially they're an addition to the building. They're not this uh, quick and fancy thing that you put up and walk away from. They're not trailers uh, by any means. Mm -hmm. Dr. Seuss. Oh, I just wanted to pick up on what uh, Dr. Alison Ampe said. Um, and I know that I also was surprised by hearing from parents information that we hadn't seen yet. Mm -hmm. And it just come up a couple times. Actually, it came up last year with kindergarten numbers as well. So it. There just would be great to have some sort of vehicle when there's new information mm -hmm. out there that we somehow we're not sort of blindsided by parents telling us that there is something. It was it just in the discussion, though. Yeah. There's no, there's no well, controlling it. There wasn't any. There's no, not. There was not a new. No, plan. that was not what we got. We got. No. I, I actually, I specifically then sent something to Diane Johnson asking if, if what the parent had said to me was true, and she said yes. So it wasn't. It wasn't a. No, there was. I'm telling you, I was there. There was no new plan 
given out. There is no new information okay, that you're so using. This was all in discussion. This was, I, actually, this was about the plan to put modulars at Thompson. No, is there is no plan to do that. We are looking into looking every school due to enrollment. That's all we said. All right. <laughs> okay. There was no new plan. There think, is nothing. I think what happens, and I, I forget mm -hmm. who made the point, is sometimes mm -hmm. what, you know, you have to, I've learned this, you know, you can say it, but you have probably say it many times because people hear it through the, mm -hmm. what they're mm -hmm. a, a filter or, not, or they're emotional. Um, the, the, the numbers on enrollments, you've had these for a long mm -hmm. time. These are just nothing new in terms of elementary enrollment. But, you know, we've talked about incre the, um, the increasing enrollments in kindergartens. And mm -hmm. I have to, you know, I don't want, I want this to be as transparent as possible. I don't want a surprise later on when I said, okay, oh, by the way, we're going to put it at this school, and we never mentioned that school mm -hmm. before. Right. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to do that. So right, I, but I we as a school committee hadn't heard that. So it's just sort of be a great way to mm -hmm. find some ways that we can get that information as parents are getting it. So parents are being told about various possibilities, even though they're not set in stone. And unless we're at the meeting, and we could have all gone to the meeting, but, but, it, but we didn't, right? And we wouldn't get that information except through parents. I, I so hear it's you. just frustrating hear, yeah. to have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll try to think you know some sort of vehicle that give you, give you the PowerPoint ahead of time or something yeah, yeah that'd the be PowerPoint awesome. ahead of time and maybe a or couple of quick notes or, and points but or I, now but the thing is is we're within 48 hours it, it's, when on, the it's, yeah. it's on the website yeah. okay yeah Mr. Thielman. So it's just a couple takeaways that I want, I want to clarify one thing that I'm taking away from the conversation is that it is possible there'll be uh, some modulars that will stay more than one year in, more in, in, in addition to the Addison Middle School. So I think it's an important mm -hmm. thing for the public to understand yeah. that we're looking at some modulars that might be there for a longer period of time to alleviate some of the mm -hmm. enrollment growth that was raised in the conversations we had. The other thing <clears throat> that um, you know we didn't get a chance to get to on the other night is that you know there, there, there are some educational advantages to having um, elementary school children on a middle school campus mm -hmm. uh, that I hope we get a chance to highlight as this discussion moves forward. You have, they're going to get exposure to the middle school before other children. Um, that can be fun and exciting uh, to a certain degree. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fact that if you have fourth and fifth grade teachers on the same campus with sixth, seventh, and eighth grade teachers and you use their time wisely, they can improve their practice because they're going to see what's expected at the higher grade levels. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a positive for Stratton kids in the future and maybe all kids in the district too. So there's a lot of other positives that, you know, it's not ideal, the fears are understandable. I think any parent would have the same fears, but there's a lot of positives uh, that could come out of this, and I hope they're highlighted as this process goes forward. A lot of educational positives that I see. And one is the other way around too. It's the, it's the middle school teachers yeah. being able to see, mm -hmm. it, we've always talked about them going out to the elementary schools right. and observing, but it's, it's hard, you know, to do it, but they're gonna have, classes right they there. They can observe go. classes and see what's going on in those classes and the fourth and fifth grade teachers can observe sixth, seventh and eighth grade teachers teaching and see what the expectations are mm -hmm. there. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of positives from, from a PD perspective. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer? I hear what you're saying, Mr. Thielman. I think the fifth grade and it, it indicates with the lack of concern, not lack of concern, but not a negative concern from the fifth grade parents. We're not hearing from Third fifth grade, grade parents. parents. Yeah, yeah. And that adjustment. Uh, as an educator, as a parent, I see a fourth grader in the third grade coming from an elementary environment to a quasi-elementary environment in the fourth grade, back to an elementary environment, then to a thing. Kids, are, I said it before and I'll say it again, kids are adaptable. Parents have less adaptability. I, I, and it's a, a justifiable concern on their part. Uh, if we can make it easier, I, what I'm hearing, we're going to try to make it easier. If we can't, we'll, we'll have to make it as smooth as we can right. and, and going forward. And, uh, I, I think I heard Ms. Stock say it before, we need to all have the same message going out and, and the message has to be positive and people can get us emotionally involved. You all know me, mm -hmm. I, I can giggle. But we have to stay positive with these people, no matter how, and how tough. Um, Thank Just you. to share in case anyone else in our wide viewing audience is looking for it, we did find it on the website. It, I don't understand where it is, but if you search for Stratton, you can find it. Mr. Pierce, help me. So um, if anyone else wants to look at the PowerPoint, it is there. Okay, cool. Some of the most successful schools in the Commonwealth are K-8s. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's nothing inherently good or bad about fourth graders being in the same building with eighth graders. Um, 
I think that yes, there's a lot of unknown ahead of us, uh, but the K-8 slots in Lowell, where it's all by parent choice, are the most highly sought after seats because people like that configuration. Um, all I can say is that uh, as, as somebody who studies public policy and, and enjoys that part of it as a town meeting member since 92, uh, we do different uh, business differently in Massachusetts, particularly in Massachusetts towns. So it's quite confusing for people who are not used to the way a town government works. And uh, coming from New York, it's so totally different. Uh, the, the, the school boards have total autonomy over their, uh, their operation. Uh, towns are totally separate from schools. Uh, uh, the funding is completely different. Um, there are a lot of moving parts. We're, we're getting a budget from the uh, capital planning. We're, we, the, the building, uh, the people are building a permanent town building committee. We have operational say. So it's, it, it's dispersed. And I think that parents who are not, don't understand the way we do business are looking at all these moving parts and saying, how do we influence this, what's going on, without understanding what our constraints are and what, and what the process is. And I want to thank the superintendent, Ms. Starks, and the uh, facility subcommittee for doing the work of uh, engaging in the discussion and, and gi giving the lay of the land to the folks so they understand what we're doing and what our motivations and constraints are. Uh, one last comment from Mr. Hainer, very Just a briefly. Just request through the chair. Uh, Dr. Bordy, could you send us, uh, you do send us the regular enrollment figures and stuff, but mm. can mm -hmm. you give us the updated ones just to mm -hmm. keep us abreast of, of you, the yeah, projections for next year, right. Yeah. Projections for next year, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't have, the, the kindergarten numbers, mm -hmm. Uh, well, no, no district-wide. You, you, you were talking. You're talking about work, uh, working from a new set of numbers. Yeah. The, the modules permanent based on uh, projected. We're going to get that complete report, the final report, probably in a week. Okay. Great. You're, Thank you. You okay. absolutely are going to get. We'll that. have it for the next meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Next full meeting. District accountability. Uh, are we done, Ms. Starks? Yes. Okay. District accountability, curriculum instruction, and assessment, Mr. Thielman. We're going to meet either on. You're actually available, Jen, on June 3rd, right? So, well, we're either going to meet June 3rd or June 8th. We're going to figure it out right but after you this. You told week. me June 3rd was off. Well, he then I got an email from you free. <laughs> well, I would like to do it earlier than the time that you listed, preferably, which is unusual okay. for me because I usually like it later or really oh, early. But man. that day, I need it like earlier than I think. What did you say? Well, I think the teachers would like to do it at 4:30 yeah, on June so 3rd. Yeah, so I'd love to accommodate. All right, let me check with everyone's schedule okay. and see if June 3rd at 4.30 works. Um, June 3rd at 4.30? Is that <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you have to be there? Or for the, or Curriculum instruction. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, we're talking about the kindergarten. Uh, the definitely needs to yes, be Yes, she definitely yeah. needs All right, to be there. All right, then I, you know, I had, okay, then I'm, we'll, we'll just meet real quick <laughs> to figure no, out the time. No, that's fine. 4.30 mm -hmm. is fine on the June 3rd if that's what you're mm -hmm. Why don't we do 4.30 on June 3rd? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll just reconfirm with Linda tonight. 4.30 on June 3rd. We'll keep it. There you go. Good. Thank you, Judd. So we're going to meet 4.30 on June Obviously 3rd. next week. Mm -hmm. uh, that was five minutes of riveting TV. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <I didn't. laughs> uh, community relations, Dr. Seuss. Uh, we're trying to schedule a meeting. Um, actually, we're waiting on Dr. Brody's schedule to see what, what works. Okay. Uh, any announcements from the committee, uh, Ms. Starks? I just wanted to say a uh, big congratulations to the ABGC rowing team, mm. which is, I mean, not ABGC, um, Arlington Belmont. Mm -hmm. um, second year state champs. Wow. Unbelievable. That is, unbelievable. That is really unbelievable. Public school <laughs> champions. That is just awesome. I can't believe it. So that's really great. They worked hard. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hainer. The Memorial Day Parade, I'm happy to say, had a contingent first time of scouts. They were daisies. They're the five-year-old Girl Scouts, and they marched in the parade, and they were all excited. Oh, Great. good. Uh, any Did you other keep up with them? <laughs> Did you keep up with them? I was ahead of them. They had to follow me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I had to move quickly. Uh, anything else under announcements? Uh, or That brings us to our second executive session of the evening. Uh, 
Group. Actually, Mr. Chair, if I may, go ahead. just a quick plug for a lot of Arlington students are participating uh, this weekend in a show in, it's actually in Belmont, unfortunately, but it's a great town hall. Uh, the Sound of Music mm -hmm. will be performed there at the Belmont Town Hall this weekend. A lot of Arlington students are in that mm -hmm. show. Okay. Thanks. Including a couple school committee members. <laughs> kids, kids, yeah. A couple. Big show. Big show. Big show. Really big all right. Show. Big show. Um, uh, I'm going to entertain a motion to go into executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiations with union and or non-union personnel in which, if in held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect, and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Moved by so Dr. Moved. Allison Ampey, seconded by Mr. Pierce. Roll call, Mr. Hainer. Aye. Mr. Pierce, Aye. Dr. Allison Aye. Ampey, Ms. Starks, yes. Mr. Thielman, Aye. Dr. Seuss. Yes. The chair votes yes. We will be adjourning from executive session. Oh. Thank you very much.